come in with thinking about what that's on the internet. These things can be finicky, but uh, yeah. All right, hello and welcome everybody. Hopefully you are doing well out there and hopefully this last week you had a very good astrological spring break and had a chance to go back into the Kickstarter or the um, YouTube Academy playlist and look back over the content and the information provided by SJ Anderson, Chris Brennan, um, Gemini Brett and um, Naomi Bennett. So we've had a lot. We've made our way in this last few weeks through how a little bit of how to do an election, but then also the history and the astronomy of astrology. And this week, I'm so excited because we're going to kick off getting into the charts. It's exciting right. time. So hopefully you had a brilliant <laughs> spring break, you know, and now though, I got Gordon Mullins to talk to us about the intro to planets in astrology. Welcome. Welcome, sir. Thank you so much. I really appreciate the, uh, the format. I appreciate the opportunity and I uh, appreciate you putting this together again. Um, to put this together for the astrological community is benefiting us all like on a very macro level. And you've kind of taken that, um, taken a bull by his horns and really went to it. And I uh, really appreciate you doing this because uh it's helping to get the message out there. I think this is helping a lot of people, which is mostly uh, every astrologer's uh, intent is to help people. So um, yeah, I'm really enjoying it. So you can see my screen. Good. Everything is good. Yeah, I think everything is good. So I am, uh, I'm going to hand the floor to you and you guys enjoy today's lesson. Hopefully you've got been able to go ahead and either purchase a chart from whomever you purchase charts from. I mean, there's like a hundred astrologers, you know, just in the YouTube Academy alone or pulled it up on astro.com and you can grab your chart even as we're going through this introduction of meeting these planets and start to think about what you're seeing just even on, on your paper. So absolutely. Let's jump in here. All right. All right. Well, let's get to it again. I'm going to introduce myself. My name is Gordon Mullins. I am uh, based in Charlotte, North Carolina. And what I consider my practice or my intent is counseling astrology. It's really to help you to understand yourself, help you to become aware of yourself beyond the surface. And astrology, again, my name, also my, my website is The Unlikely Astrologer, because if you'd have asked me if I'd have done this you know, a decade or two ago, I'd have been like, absolutely not. And I think that that, you know, gave me a good, unique perspective in regards to understanding astrology and also be able to speak to astrology from a layman's perspective, even knowing, knowing the depth to kind of help you to understand the process. So that is my intro. That is my elevator speech. And again, you came here to learn about the planets. And I really am thankful to uh, be able to help you during your journey. So the objective here, for our class is actually to learn and to understand the energies attached to the planets, okay? That is what we're looking to do on a very basic level. Now, there will be classes that will go into specific planets. And there, just to let you know, there's books, tons of books on each planet. So this is an introductory uh, version to help you get started, again, be careful with the weapon, with the knowledge that we give you, because again, it can be so intoxicating that you just run and take time with yourself during the process. And the biggest thing is to have fun. I want you to have fun. I want you to understand that this takes patience. It takes decades. And astrologers that are practicing 10, 20, 30 years still learn new things about it. It's the brilliance of astrology as being the midpoint between astronomy, which you saw in previous classes, and psychology. So it's giving you representations of that energy, which in turn, you can help to understand yourself and also understand the cycles that you potentially have gone through past, present, present <clears throat> and also the future. So, so I wanted to kind of talk to you about the planets and the energies. And I want you to understand the concepts of one that you are one of one, right? So we are in a society that pretty much tries to put you in a box or put a set of rules around you. And what I'm telling you is that, that, does them, that does, that's not what astrology is telling you to do. Astrology is telling you that you have your own unique sheet of music, your astrological notes, right? 
and they're placed in a unique place. So when you're doing your natal chart reading, there is your birth time, your birth date, and your birth location. It, the time can be five minutes off. You might have a completely different chart than somebody born in the same hospital. I've even done twins where even the external energies have been different for them, that even their chart was one degree apart. Didn't matter. They experienced the different planets in different ways, which made their unique, uh, it made a unique situation for them. I also want you to, to think of the concept of this as well. I want you to think of the concept of you not just using or looking at nature, but being a part of nature, right? Being a part of the cosmos. So why does nature only stop at our own zone layer, right? Why doesn't it go further? And that's what astrology is saying, that you are a part of nature, which includes all the elements, fire, air, earth, water, the nature that you're seeing around you, the mood, the mood can swing with the weather, right? But also the astrological weather can have an effect on you. Now, it's not going to be dire. Again, still giving you a level. There's, the plants don't talk to you, so don't be <laughs> worried about that. And also understand this free will, right? So I just want you to understand those concepts. For those that, some people, this might just be an honest review, but I don't want to make any assumptions. Some people are starting their journey, and I want to make sure you understand what we are trying to help you with. So with that nature talk, I wanted to let you understand that if you look on the left-hand side of this, uh, you can kind of see um, how nature, the, the cosmos, how your DNA, how Fibonacci sequence how even the Fibonacci sequence was in flowers, Fibonacci sequences that we've all seen in shells, have, they're a part of us, right? It's not something we just are looking at, it's a part of us as well. It's a part of our DNA structure that you see in your left hand side. Look at the, the similarities between your DNA um, uh, pattern and look at the pattern of the galaxy, look at the pattern of the numbers. Right? Look at the pattern of the flowers, look at the pattern of shells. Is this coincidence? I highly doubt it, right? What I'm telling you is that you're a part of this. So embrace that you also are unique. You also have the frequencies and understand these and, and take your time with yourself to understand these planetary energies can affect you. Negative, positive, again, you adding internal and external. So we have to, it's a unique sheet of music. But astrology to me, is the language of the soul, right? It's to, for you to understand yourself and uh, it helps so much throughout the process. So what we're gonna do in this lesson is we're gonna go over each planet, its meaning, the energies behind it. We're gonna talk about their internal energy and function that create the unique one-on-one, -on -one, right? So remember that the earth we have one planet, but 7.53 million worlds in it. So you have your own world, your own stuff that you're dealing with. And the way you interpret things, the way that you experience things is unique. And that is a part of this journey for you to understand that you, like you feel, saying you're special and understanding like no one else by me is like me. And this planet is two different things. You know, stand out and embrace yourself. And then we're going to go, of course, into the astrological practices um, because the planets are like the fundamental part of understanding this. The, um, it's, well, if you don't get this, take your time, but don't try to just skip towards the more advanced things without having a good, strong foundation into the planetary cycles, their meanings in ast astrology. So we don't want to rush this thing, but we want to understand it. So I want you to understand the concept that I like to use in regards to kind of understanding the, the planets and their energies. So I want you to think of the planets like actors, right? I want you to think of, in your natal chart, right? your circular, right? that's why I use this theater to the left, your circular natal chart is their theater. Now, the actors, Right. So let's say you take one of my favorite actors, Denzel, right? The actor is the planet, right? So let's say Denzel, because of his brilliance, will say that he's Mercury. Well, Mercury, that actor with a different zodiac, right? So if you put an act, that actor, Denzel, with a, a, let's say an Aries type of energy, that might be training day. You might put the actor 
Den Denzel Washington with a Piscean energy, that might be John Q. You might put the actor Denzel Washington Mercury in Mars, that might be glory. So understand that the, that I want you to understand the concepts that because these planets are foundational, these are the actors. And of course, there's so many different concepts that you're, once you go into this, like this is the beginning, but I kind of get excited in regards to this stuff. Um, you'll start to understand the br brilliance of like, even with your sun sign to say like, what does that mean? What does this actor do? How does it, how does it actually work on my stage? So what we're trying to show you is that you might know the generic time, but we're showing your individual time, the concept of that, Day, the day and the moment that you went from your mother to an external, you know, uh, environment, that was a magical moment, right? And that's where we took the snapshot of the planets and the actors and said, that's, that's this person. So understand the concept of understanding your stage, the actors. Remember, the actor can be all over the stage. So that's where the houses come into place. And then the actor could be um, communicating with another. So let's say uh, Denzel Washington is, is um, uh, working with a, with a lead actress. Well, that could be another planet, right? Actor, actress, right? And they're communicating. So you're blending those energy. That's what the aspects are. So to give you these introductory concepts to help you understand that just because this actor's in this, that doesn't mean it's like that for everybody. It's actually a unique sheet of music. And then taking all this internal energy and then applying the external as well to say like, this is a map, but based on your family, based on where you were born, based on what time you were born, if you were born 50 years ago versus now, a lot of things have changed. I want you to understand that that is what provides another layer of you shouldn't just be getting report, astrological reports. You need to talk to somebody because these are the things that we discuss, which is what I do in regards to counseling astrology. So it's a matter of just making sure you understand that it's about us in this. So enough of that. I hope that helps you with the concept. And let's go into the first planet. So I gave a picture of the planet on the top and the, what we call the glyph, the astrological glyph that you will see on your natal chart. And this is the sun. Now, I, use, I used to do urban farming. So I use a lot of nature analogies. And I think that kind of helps because a lot of people kind of understand that concept because it's a tangible thing that they've seen. So again, even the sun, right? The sun, what does it do? It shines. It, and and <laughs> unfortunately, astrology, uh, we have to fight sun sign astrology because most people know their sun sign, right? This is the most common thing that most people know about themselves. I am a Leo. They know that all Leos, blah, blah, blah. And that's where we're now giving a level of depth to say, hey, we're adding some more um, depth into that character's uh, description and what they actually do. So the sun is, think of what it does. It shines, it warms, it actually can... Um, provide a certain amount of heat. So we're just going into the spring, right? So the sun being at a certain angle then provides that level of heat that is enabled to let seeds germinate, right? So it's, it's actually providing things. It's like your point of view, like how you do things. And it's of course a fire element. It's associated with Leo, like my sun sign. So, uh, but it's a matter of what that actually does. And that's, you know, we can kind of see how much it does in regards to farming. We can see that it helps. And this is what you can identify with. And the sun is such an important thing. It, it kind of gets them diminished a little bit because of it being such a common thing in regards to people knowing that it's, a lot of astrologers might not look at that, but it is an important, important thing to know where that actor is, right? So my actor is in Leo. So that might potentially might, right? So I'm, I'm giving like all the disclaimers because last thing I want somebody to do is say, like all Leos are this. I've gone into places, spoke to people and one, no, no one ever guesses my sun sign, but just understand what this concept is. Like it helps me in regards to my, um, the way I speak, the way I think about creativity, the way I want to be recognized, the way I approach a room, right? The way that I am viewed, the way my point of view might be this, Right. And that's what that actor is really telling me. 
right? So this planet, of course, and the first two planets don't go retrograde. But I want you to understand how much power this planet has. Like the sun gets, you know, it has, it's a commonality in regards to everybody understanding their sun sign and really diving into that. But I want you to understand the depth of it. It's not that the sun is in Aries and that means you're going to punch somebody in the mouth, right? What does that mean in regards to how you push? What does that mean in regards to you pushing into things? How do you, you view yourself? How do you want to be, you know, how do you want the external world to see you as well, right? So how do you want to be seen? How do you, if you're not comfortable with being seen that way, why is that? And the sun can really give you that level of depth in regards to understanding it. And I think it's probably... Unfortunately, um, underestimated because of the way that it, astrology was introduced, but I really want you to understand the concept of what it can do. When the sun is properly placed and the temperatures are properly right, a lot of things can manifest. A lot of things can grow. If, this, if the sun is stifled, a lot of things can grow. Internal energy I'm talking about. These are the seeds, the, the, the farming that I'm talking about, the seeds that we put in our mind and our space and our energy. When we have the proper heat to that, it can blossom. But if you put, if it comes too fast, right, there's something called bolting in farming where the heat went on too fast and it kind of went haywire. So it's understanding when to go back and forth, when to adjust the temperature, when not to adjust the temperature and understanding yourself. So this actor, when it wears different costumes, it can be totally different. So this actor, let's say we put on a Gemini, it might be a lot of critical thinking, a lot of quick, I need to move around. I mean, I need to have a level of mental stimulation. And that's how that actor works with that costume. And that's what, you know, this actor is really talking about in regards to the moon. I mean, excuse me, to the sun. So the next one we're talking about is the moon. Now, a lot of people, again, this the cycle for this is 28 days. It's typically, we would say it's very much in tune with the woman cycle. So I want you to really understand that the element is water of emotion. And a lot of people really, this is probably the first introduction for a lot of people because that's what they see at night, the full moon, understand, hearing about new moons and association with cancer, with your feelings. And I want to make sure that we don't oversimplify that word. Feelings can be sad, happy, depressed, um, manic. It can be uh, joyful. It could be pain. It can be sorrow. And what does that, in regards to like the element water, what does that, water can find a crevice in any, anything. So how deep is that sorrow? It, it also goes into the past. It represented mother. It can also represent early childhood as well, you know, that foundational type. I, I look at it as, you know, the foundational emotional structure of a person, how they like to um, be treated. Again, you might be a person that, let's say you have this actor in Taurus and you like to snuggle and touch and you don't wanna be rushed in regards to me. Or you can have this actor in Leo, and you need to have a certain level of recognition because I am royalty and I need to be treated a certain way, right? That's the costume it is, but it, it's that gut feeling, right? It's this first surface level. If you want to look at it in regards to water, it's the waves that you see from the ocean, not the undercurrent and not the ocean floor. It is the waves that you see. And sometimes these waves can move very quickly, right? So this goes in and out of sign every two and a half days, moves very quickly. But I want you to understand the concept of even the cancer, the, the early childhood, right? How you are viewed, how you emotionally are is sometimes how you, you've grown up, your, your family environment. Were you in a loving family environment? Were you in a tough family environment? Was love shown through toughness? Like that could be a way that you show your feelings. I don't like to open up because I let somebody all the way in, right? So the, the moon is giving you that level of, and it moves so much. I don't want you to discount how much it moves. Think about what it actually does. When it bulges the tide, we're talking about millions upon millions of gallons of water that it can move. We're 70 to 80%. So are you going to turn into Teen Wolf? No, right? But I want you to understand 
that this emotional depth that we're talking about is not to be taken lightly, right? It does move quickly, but that doesn't mean that it's frivolous. That doesn't mean that it's, you know, something to kind of slightly dismiss. It's how you process information, feelings wise, you know, how did, did that hurt really go down to the core? Are you hiding it well? That all has to do with that. It's also even how you comfort. So even like it's ruled by cancer, right? But just the way that you have been loved is a lot of ways of that, how you like to be loved. What's exciting to you, right? Excitement is an emotion as well. So when you start using different type of costumes with these, these, um, these planets, you can start to see the level of complexity that potentially is done worse. Or when you get to that point, you start attaching other planets to it through aspects and say, these two actors, how do they work together? Is it tension? Is it pleasant? Like, how does that go? And also, I want to let you know, before we go any further, there are no bad planets. There are no bad uh, placements. There are no bad charts. So don't think that you have, oh my God, I think this costume is bad. I think that this moon is in Scorpio and, and this moon is in Neptune. And, and excuse me, this moon is in Pisces. What, is, what does that mean? Like, that doesn't mean it's bad. It just means you, that's the way you process information. So I want you to understand that as well. That moon energy is such a critical point in regards to that. So we're going next to Mercury. This is probably one of the, out of most of the planets, this is probably one of the big ones because of the retrogrades, because retrograde about three times a year. And, you know, people going retrograde and all of a sudden they're like, hey, my car is going to blow up. And, you know, but remember the retrogrades are just to look inward. But going to this planet, excuse me, which is ruled by uh, Gemini and Virgo, it is how you process information, how you think, how you listen, right? How, when you get into a situation, what is your first way of like kind of processing internally and how are you processing this in the external? It has to do with Mercury. You know, being aware of your tone sometimes is more important than what you say with a lot of different people, right? So just having that level of awareness or when you listen to something, you say, hey, are you playing like verbal double dutch with a person? Like, are you just waiting to get your word and you're not literally listening because you have a point to make and you need to be um, heard? And you're, you're kind of like, I don't really want to hear what you have to say. It's how you process you know, your thinking and your logic, like logically, like, again, I have my Virgo in, uh, in Virgo. So I immediately start looking at the analytical stuff. I, am I, is that the right way to think about this thing? Is it a macro way or a micro way, right? So how you process information. Now, when you hear about the retrogrades, it's looking inward because most of the time that people n never look inward, which is why sometimes the retrogrades are actually feel a little bit uncomfortable because you're asked to, to look inside yourself and say, hmm, how am I processing this information? How do I talk to myself? It's also a Mercury type of thing. Am I beating myself up to say what I haven't done? Am I over uh, giving myself too much uh, glory with things that really weren't my thing? I did this versus it was a collective team effort. Um, that is gonna be the way that your Mercury is seen. And I want you to understand the importance of that because please note that the person you talk to the most in your life is yourself. So getting that internal voice is just as important as how you talk to others. Also how you get information. And then how, let's say you have a sentence and what do you highlight in first? What are the weak points so that you can work on having that level of balance in regards to the way that you are receiving information, processing it, and understand what's happening, what the person wants externally and what you want to deliver to them externally. So that level of thinking is so, so important. And it does still have, again, a lot of that has to do with the past as well. And I, I reiterate that because that's the shadow work that you have to do in regards to a lot of things in regards to Mercury. But that rational mind is so complex and the nonverbals as well. Like, so think about it like this, 70% of communication is nonverbal. That has to do with this as well. How do, you, 
how do people view you? How do you view yourself when you go into a room, right? How do you, do you clam up? Do you, you know, you work in the room and feel a level of confidence? Do you feel like I don't really like small talk? So that's why I feel like this networking thing is crap. Like all of these different elements go into how you're processing your mind and how your mind works. So let's go to the next one, Venus. Venus is of, you know, again, we look at love and attraction, but a lot of people want to know how they, you know, I, as astrologers, we get a heavy amount of information on vocational and relationships. So love, love of self first before of love of relationships is my motto, right? It's a cycle of 225 days. It goes around the, um, the zodiac. It's mixed in regards to Taurus is, a, is one of the zodiacs and then Libra, which is actually makes perfect points. So love, how do you like to be loved? Are you in love with intelligence? Are you in love with uh, courage? Are you in love with, do you silently love? Do you um, need to feel the underlying elements or the, the level of safety that is beyond the, the words? tummy time the all of the way that you were loved in the past has to do with with, uh, with venus right it, it's a level of complexity of understanding how you process love if you have not received love right or affection or those higher emotions how do you process it when you get it do you recognize it do you start to self-sabotage because it feels so foreign venus is about the love of self that's where we, the core of it is. The core of Venus is the love of self, how you even attract beauty or how you view beauty. Some people love beauty in symmetry, like a love that things are precise and right angles and everything is, you know, super clean and minimalistic. And people love Picasso and they love, you know, English gardens that don't have any formal lines or geometry, but it all comes together, right? There's that level of how do you view beauty? Do you love the uniqueness, somebody that stands out? Do you like the military type of structured way? And it's your way you're attractive. What you attract has a lot to do with the energy that you are manifesting within. So again, we start there and then we potentially go to relationships. But I think that most of the time people are looking at relationships in the way of what the person can feel because I don't love myself. And that's where this planet can potentially, uh, looking at it, working on it, can kind of give you that awareness of the things that you need to work on. And again, if you do not have a relationship with yourself, all external ones will be not on good foundational um, balance. So I want you to really take the time to understand that the Venus, again, you can see that it's one of the most beautiful uh, glyphs that we see there. And again, the, the cycles of that is really to help you in regards to understanding yourself, your understanding that value that you present, understanding how you love, how you give love, even telling somebody how you love or how you like to be loved. Isn't that great? Like to no assumptions to say like, I know how I like to feel. And I'm able to verbalize it with you versus I want you to kind of read my mind. But now that you're fully aware of it, like I have my Venus in Virgo. So I like things. I like doing things for my, my mate, my wife. And I like to, you know, it's, it's about doing the details and about like the service type of way, not service like servitude, but service in regards to um, doing these, these things. That's what I enjoy. But she might enjoy something completely different. And she might enjoy um, affection and attraction and cuddling and stuff like that. That might be super good. So if I'm aware of that, I'm able to give her the love that she feels the best. So it's understanding yourself and understanding the other person as well. So that's the association because Taurus is the first earth sign. And that has to really do with self-love, enjoying in yourself, your own space, knowing that self-care, even how you do self-care can be based on that, what makes you feel really, really good. And that in turn manifests itself externally. So understand the importance of Venus and how that actor plays, right? So the actor, let's put 
um, Aries on, right? That might be somebody, I need some, some spontaneous type of action. I need something to feel, I would need to feel alive, right? Like I need to feel that level of like, or somebody that might have, let's say in uh, Gemini, like they might be attracted to intelligence and your physical way might be, it's important, but I will fall in love with your mind before I fall in love with the physical being of yourself. I need that mental stimulation that can really challenge and we can have debates and conversation. And guess what? You can't not talk to me, right? Like that would actually be hurtful to me. But if I can express that, that's where, and again, there's 12 different costumes that this actor can wear, but I want you to understand that that's how it, it looks per se. So let's go on to Mars element of fire cycle around two years ruled by Aries tradition rule of Scorpio. Mars is about pushing forward. And Mars, again, it's ruled by Aries. And a lot of these Aries are like, yeah, that's what we do. But it, sometimes we need it. Sometimes we can over plan, right? I actually put some stuff on my Instagram yesterday of like the Aries blunt talks. So sometimes there's absolutely no filter. Almost can be childlike at times. <laughs> but um, Mars is where you need to push forward. Mars is where you need to have that courage, right? To be embracing yourself, to it's shooting forward. And it's saying, okay, you have to take the first step. Like, don't be scared. And it might seem like the Mars energy is so intense, but it, we need that intensity, right? Mars is representing the first house. It is that first, that immense energy that's necessary to do a lot of things it's the i'm gonna take i'm gonna jump right i'm gonna hold my nose and do this thing i'm scared but i'm still gonna push forward or it's sometimes that that great way of like saying like what are you scared of why are you scared of that right to the, the it seems aggressive but is that aggressive like again it can be overly aggressive let's not say that it can't but I want to make sure we don't put things in a negative way. So you're not looking at your chart saying, oh, damn, I wish I had this chart. You got the best chart you're supposed to have, period. So don't place your, your actor somewhere and be like, man, I, I wish I had your chart. That can happen too. We don't want that to happen. So with Mars, it's how you act in the struggle, right? How you're able to persevere, how you're able to dig deep, how you're able to press forward even with the fear gripping you, but you're like, you know what? If I don't try this, nothing's going to happen. And it can be that unfiltered type of way. So how your Mars works for you. So mine, again, I'll use my chart as an example. My actor's in Virgo. So I'll go to the details, right? But you got to make sure you don't do the, the shadow work of saying like, to what, what point, right? So it's learning yourself. Like there's a point of diminishing returns when you go so far into the details. So it's amplifying that Virgo type of costume, but that, that's what the core of this, this actor is about. So don't think that, oh, I have Mars and Aries. That means that I'm, you know, I'm a hothead per se. You could be. Um, but then you become aware of it to say like, all right, let me take a step back because this is might be the way that people are interpreting me. And let me take and say, like, how can I change this? So because my intent is to help you to, to lead the way and blaze your trail. Listen, it's not just not the, no, like not wanting anybody to talk to me. It's about saying like, hey, don't tell me I can't do this. Right. And that's a good energy. Right. That's a great energy for, for um, people to take. Don't tell me I can't do something. Don't tell me I can't transform into this. Or this has never been done and it's never been done that way. Or we always do it like that at this company. That's communication that would probably make a Mars say like, all right, either you hold my beer or I got to go. But um, that is the energy that, that Mars. And you want to see where it's placed in your chart to really get how that works for you uniquely. Right? How does that active work in your on your stage when it has whatever zodiac costume it's on? So because it's it's a transformational type of thing, but you need that initial push. There, there, there's people that you sometimes you need somebody to tell you stop swimming at this shallow and you know how to swim, and then you say like, hey, I've taken all the lessons, I've done all this, and then there might be that small push on your back, and by the time you realize that you're in the deep end. And you're swimming up and they're like kind of laughing, like I told you to do it, but you didn't believe it. 
So now you understand, like you can push forward, push forward. Don't be scared. Even if you're scared, still push forward because it's a lot less scary on the other side. Everything that fear is crippling you. And that's what Mars wants to get rid of. And that's what it wants to, um, that's the energy of this actor. The energy of this actor is that. So you apply different, you know, add more fire, it could be more intense. You add a, a little bit of air, it could be a lot of ways that you, you like to debate, right? You might like to um, have a heated discussion and, and somebody externally might be like, are they mad at each other? You're like, no, they just, that's, they like that level of, of debate. They like that level of, it seems like they're in like violent agreement, but it's okay. And that's the part of this Mars energy that is so brilliant that a lot of us need because fear cripples us from past. And sometimes it's, it's you looking and saying like, this is who I am, I can do it. And that's what your chart can tell you. Like, hey, you doubt this, but innately it's in you, like go for it and, um, and act. Again, we plan so much, sometimes it's a way for us to self-sabotage. Mars is like, stop the damn planning. Are you gonna plan again for another year or are you gonna do it? Because you know, every, all right, what's the worst that can happen? Just do it. Are you scared? You can vision the, the failure. Can you vision the success? No? And then let's stop talking. Oh, you really want it? Show me. Show me you want it with actions. You talk too much. Show me with your actions. That's Mars type talk. But remember, it's not just to try to beat you up. There might be a lot of love behind that. And Mars sometimes can get lost in the tone. We have to sometimes ask them, or you ask yourself, like, I don't want my message to be lost in this tone, but how can I give it that they need to push forward? And that's what this Mars energy is really helping you to do and come in that first step of transformation, right? So I hope that you get that part, right? So the next one is Jupiter. And Jupiter is ruled uh, by Sagittarius, the modern, and actually the rulership of Pisces before. Um, the element would be fire, again, with that Sagittarius, and it's a 12-year cycle. So now you're understanding that these cycles mean a lot of different things. Again, you have the moon cycle is 28 days, but so then you're starting to get into what's considered the outer planets, right? These are ones that could be generational. These are the planets that you know, if you're all born in the same year, right, or thereof, um, you all might have Jupiter in Aries, right? That's a that's a, a block of time. Like that's when astrologers can start. Oh, you're born this year. You had this in here. You have Pluto in here. They could do those with those outer planets, Neptune, and so forth. So when you hear the words inner planets, it's the ones that we've already gone through, and when you hear the outer planets, it's actually um, starts at Jupiter. So I just want to make sure you get that because you can kind of hear that terminology a lot. And I want to make sure you understand it, but it's a matter of expansion, right? It can expand a lot of things. It is, it can be overindulgent. So a lot of people use the analogy of Santa Claus in regards to this, like, but generous, like giving things, like being being generous with your time, being generous with your space. And that all depends on the actor, right? So you could be generous with your point of view. You could be generous with uh, your intensity, uh, which some people might not be able to handle. But it does rule, uh, let's say, philosophy, uh, religions, and, and macro. I, I view it more as macro thinking, right? So it's a way that you really, but understand there's another side to that, right? So it's, it's just like you going, if you overindulge or you always think that you're lucky, one day your, your luck will run out. So how does this work in regular life, right? So let's say they haven't, I'm from Jamaica, so they have all-inclusive parties, right? You go and you pay your one fee and drinks are free, right? And it, first time I went, it threw me off, right? So everybody's getting drinks and I'm like, how much to pay? They're like, nothing. I'm like, I'll take seven more. Like I, <laughs> I was like, I came out of there like this. And within, you know, I'm drinking because I'm, I'm not used to it. It's overindulgent. It's going to the buffet and just going crazy. It's, you know, starving yourself for two, three days for Thanksgiving dinner, you'd be like, ah, this, this don't feel good after, right? But I did too much sometimes. So it's, it's kind of doing that. But it really kind of highlights the things that you can be very good at. It can highlight the, the areas of life, right? So remember that 
with this concept of, of actors, you have the costumes and also where, where they're, where they're, um, where they're in on that stage, right? So it, it kind of can help you. And that's how you kind of blend all three of those together to really get the astrological like gusto here. So, but um, it, it helps to see, how do you see things? Do you th see things in a way of um, helping people? Do you see that this place needs to be, are you expanding your intensity to say like, there might be a person that looks at a, a business, they come in as a consultant and say, you, you got to fire everybody. Like it can, and that's fine. Like, but it could be like, whoa, that's, that's kind of intense. It could be something that actor with that costume elevating that. Right. So it could be more feeling like things are potentially pushy. Right. But it's adding to that. Like, again, that Sagittarius, it's also, again, uh, when it comes to like philosophies and religions and all that, it's that bringing everything together. Like it's that, uh, wanting to know more and exploring more about this subject. It's about this, you know, different languages mean are cool because that just shows how diverse our planet and our global community is. Seeing different cultures and tasting different foods is kind of like that, that way of not only just enjoying and embracing, right? It's the people, like the people that love travel, it's not just the travel, it's to expand your mind like to see different things outside of your little circle that you see day to day. And that's what that Jupiter element can do. It's saying that this different food made me, I can never go back. Like it's a paradigm shifting type of way to say like, hey, collectively, there's a lot going on. And it's expanding some of these energies in your, your chart to help you to do that, to where you can go forward and provide that level of generosity in regards to thought processes, critical thinking, macro thinking, right? Um, you just, it can provide a level of wisdom beyond your age, right? It's almost like you, you, you know, you always, sometimes you meet that little kid, like, and they say something profound and you'd be like, this little boy been here before, <laughs> you know? So it sometimes can provide that level of um, strategic brilliance that you'd be like, wow, they, it's chess. It's somebody like literally seeing a couple moves before, like it's not just checkers, right? It's not checkers, it's chess. Well, it's seeing the strategic move to set things up in the way that you want, right? And it's about, you know, the glyph for that is the four. And again, the planet, it's a huge planet. It's the biggest planet we have. I think that um, that red spot can hold hundreds of our, of our planets, if not thousands. So just understanding that process. And I think the Sagittarius is more external, but the Piscean is also like, going internally in a good way. Like that's also a very, very, very um, cool thing to do. A very, um, it provides you a level of wisdom when you understand yourself, right? And you understand how you want to position yourself and see the way that you want to move throughout and where you want to, what's your vision as well? Like what, what, is, what do you see this going to? When somebody asks you like that, it's, it's not your day-to-day -day activities, but where do you see the company going in one to three years? Where do you see this, you know, this field going in another ways. That's what that Jupiter archetype is really special and gives to you. So just want you to understand that. And again, it's in the modern era, it's a, it's a fire ruled by Sagittarius, which can give you some level of flavor into understanding that. So we get to Saturn. I love Saturn. Actually, I have Sun uh, conjunct Saturn. And it's 28 to 32 years. Again, understand that concept of it's being disciplined. It feels it has a mature vibe to it. It has the, like you said, the wisdom of the sages in the seven-year-old. It's cutting to the bones. It is cutting through the BS. It is trimming the fat. It is saying, what do you really want to do? with the stare in your eyes and you look away and it says, look back, I'm asking you, what do you really want? And if you tie a bow and you have a frivolous answer to that, guess what? It's stripping that away and say, you know what? I'm going to make it a little bit tougher on you. Okay. Ask, I'm going to make, you know, it's, it's stripping away everything. It's like the nakedness. It's like when the, the tide, when the tide goes back, you really know who has on their bathing suit. Like it's that moment of just, but it can be such a strategic organizational macro show you your mission and life type of 
of energy with that planet. It is serious, right? Saturn doesn't play any games, especially in the, when it transits, but that is another topic. Don't worry about that right now. It also could see where you beat yourself up in your, in your chart, where you're too hard on yourself or you haven't had that honest conversation with yourself. Not if you can do something, but have you put the work in to do it? It's like somebody saying that they want to be an entrepreneur, but don't want to take any risk. It's like somebody saying, I want to stand out from the crowd, but I, you know, I don't want everybody to see me. What? What do you mean? Or I want to open up a business. Saturn's going to ask you, do you know what your cogs are in regards to when you're selling something? Do you know what cogs are? Do you know accounting? Oh, you don't know accounting. Okay. Yeah. You don't want to know business. You just want the concept of business. It's that very difficult talk sometimes. Um, it could, that can provide you fear if you haven't done it. And sometimes it's to go toward, I like to go towards these energies or towards that actor because I really want to know what, and it's not to tear yourself apart. So that's the part that you need to be careful of. It's not to cripple you on what you haven't done. It's just to say, like, have you put the work in? Because if you haven't, it's going to show. And that's what this energy is about. It is that strategic planner. It is to have a level of caution to say the planning is also not where we also want to go, but also the risk management, right? The risk management is a part of the journey. Like, do you risk it all? Is it all? Have you put your life worth in, at the Vegas table? What's the risk behind that? You didn't really think that one out before you, you rolled it, did you? Okay. That's the Saturn type of energy. It is the person that can look at the organization and say like, hey, this department is doing well. This management is actually really bad and this person can't do this job. But this person, if I move things around, now everything fits because it can see the strategic, it can see what this person's really good at and then say, put that person there, which internally you say, put yourself in that element. It is that serious element. If you look at the cycle, you put the 28, 32, 30, there's a reason I believe your first Saturn return is when people usually get married, <laughs> whether you like it or not. 30 is that age. I mean, every age that you have a zero at the end is always a little bit more serious than the other ones. But 30 is that age that people start saying, like, I need to buy a house. Why? Because I need to be an adult. I need to be seen as more serious. I need to be seen as as grounded earth sign, right? I need to see more of that. And you apply that to yourself, but are you applying that? So Saturn is like, are you applying it because that's what you really want or because that's what you want to show to people? Because if you didn't plan it, you end up marrying the wrong person because you're like, hell, I'm 29 and shit, I got to marry somebody in 30 because 30, I'm an old hag, you know, or 30, I'm, I'm a, you know, it's just that cycle, these cycles are not coincidence. You, you're in tune with nature, if, whether you like it or not. And it can show you where you need to work on, where you're good at too. Like, again, it's not a matter of that, but let's say for me, like I used to be, like I said, I have Saturn and the sun combined. So the Saturn potentially was like, this was something I would never do presenting now, publicly now. I was nervous. I was saying how much more planning do I need to do? I, I, I'm not as good as this, you know, this, person I've seen on TV, so I'll never be good. And there was a part that I had to say, like, I have, all right, what are you scared of? Well, I'm scared of this, this. What happens if that happens? Go for it. Stop using fear. And overcoming your fear is one of the things that Saturn can help you to do. Now, it's in heavy energy, right? So it can feel, it rules Capricorn. Again, Capricorns can have that very strategic, you know, that, that goat is always climbing. Um, and it really wants to see how it lo looks externally. You don't want to embarrass that goat <laughs> publicly. They'll probably never forgive you. But it's also that level of like matureness. Like again, a lot of these Capricorn kids are very, they, they kind of see the strategic way of uh, being a good kid, right? Because that, that good kid means I get this, right? So I get what I want, right? So it's that strategic way of thinking, moving, strategizing, being able to not be rushed in regards to something to say like, hey, let's really sit down and like hash this out. And we need to do that with ourselves, right? We need to, sometimes we need to talk to ourselves about the things that we have fear from. So I'm doing this now because I'm, I had to overcome this fear. So what I did was I went towards it. I went towards my Saturn. 
and I, I joined Toastmasters, Toastmasters, right? Because I was like, I want to learn how to present, and I'm t- telling myself I can't do it. And everybody's saying like, you're good at this, but you t- turn and you go towards it, and then you. That's another paradigm shift, right? So I want you to really understand that, and also I want you to also understand this because it does have the traditional rules of, of Aquarius, which can be we're going to go to the next sign. Uh, knowing the rules, sometimes you got to know the rules in order to break them or to be that revolutionary energy. Like it's the yin and the yang. And the Saturn is telling you like, hey, these are the rules that you currently have right now. If you want to break them, you need to learn it, right? You need to understand the rules of business if you want to change business. You have to uh, get down to real brass tacks in regards to understanding your, 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 your books, right? Does that, and that can mean you don't have to do it yourself. You got to get a bookkeeper, but it's that conversation of like, I don't know that. And that's a part, that's a core fundamental thing. It's like the, you know, it wants to make sure that you're not just randomly doing stuff. It has a level of discipline. It has a level of going, if you want muscles, you got to go to gym every day. It's bottom line. You can go and get sore once every three months, but you're not going to get progress because this is where you want to go. So understand that and understand that cycle, right? So that 30, that 30 year old cycle is pretty dynamic in regards to people. And you probably have felt it many times. A lot of people got married at 27, 32 matches up with this cycle. So there's no coincidences here. Uh, Uranus, it's long, long cycle, 84 years. Again, rule of Aquarius. Aquarius, is, this is of innovation. This is of, I don't want to be told what to do. This is of, I need to see the macro, you know, I want to do the planning. I want to do the, the um, I want to break things up. I want to, just because you told me to do it, that's the reason why I don't like to do it, because you told me to do it. And actually, it doesn't make sense. Why do we do things like this? I don't, we don't have to do it like that. You have to do it like that because you're thinking so rigid. But I think outside the box. I look at Uranus, if you want to look at an actor, I would use Elon Musk, right? Elon Musk is now hit. One of his, his costumes is uh, Tesla. One of his costumes is SpaceX. One of his costumes is Solar City. One of his costumes is Neuralink. One of his costumes is PayPal back in the day, which revolutionized. There had to be that conversation to this young 26 year old that said, we just always pay by check or COD. Like, what do you mean you want to, internet? And there has to be that level of thinking outside the box that you'd be like, no, you don't have to do there. You can do commerce over the internet. And there's gotta be, if you don't have the confidence or you don't have that out of the box thinking, somebody's told you you were crazy until it was done, right? So it's that rebellious type of thing. Now, if you take the cycles, you will see on a macro scale, sometimes there's a lot of rebellion externally. I don't really go into that. I look at more of the unique factors of a person. That's where I'm, my specialty loans, but it's a higher level of thought. Like think about the concept of an electric car. Think of the concept of solar. Somebody saying like, hey, the plants use sun. We can't use sun. Well, let's develop something that converts the rays of the sun into a current that is being able to be used by a house. That is, that is phenomenal. Or to say like, hey, let's try, we don't have to do farming this way. Like you see this, again, as a past urban farmer, uh, you see this revolutionary way of smaller farms going into place, right? It seems so like, how do you make a living? Some of those guys make a better living than the traditional farms with thousands of acres on one or two acres. It's a way to say like, we don't have to do it that way. And sometimes with Aquarius, it's the old things coming back, right? So it can be very rebellious. It can be, but it's not a rebellious in regards to just, there's some people that are rebellious that just, just because you say things, they don't want to do it. But this is more of like a why and, and, and a way to kind of look at a macro view of how you want things done. And Uranus is going to give you the, the unique outside perspective. Do you, if you stifle it because of confidence, that's the way that's another story that we can talk about. And there might be the combination of actors, right? This whole stage full of actors that is causing that. But it's that higher frequency of Mercury. It's that higher mind. It's that, you know, it could be where potentially things are shocking to you. And how did you react to it? Like one kid that had moved a lot, right? 
might be like, I never had a stable home. But then there's another kid that's like, oh, I got to see the world. Like it was actually great because I got to live in all these, you know, 17 countries before I was 10. So it's how you interpret that that actor as well, which Uranus again gives you that level. And we're in the age of Aquarius, which they say astrology is actually a, Aquarian. I think that's one of the best answers. It's a rebellious type of way of thinking. Especially now, a lot of people will look at you and they'll be like, this is out of your mind if you're thinking that the planets talk to you. One, they don't. But two, it's so different, but it's something that was done thousands of years ago. So the thing that is new now is not actually new. It's just we're coming back to the surface. And it's a, le a higher level. Of, again, it's the element. I have the wrong element here, but it's actually an air. Um, it's all about that, that, that thinking. It's all about the way that you, you, you get maybe that sudden concept that you have to write on a piece of paper in the middle of the night and it wakes you up. That's the Aquarian type of energy. And then you think about how I can put this in place in a macro way. And that's like the biggest thing. That's the way that you can really take that Aquarian energy. And again, it goes throughout. And even look at... <laughs> Look at the midpoint of this, right? It, it comes at 38 to, to 42. Like how, do you, how many of you guys have had your astrological midlife crisis yet? Where you said, I need to change. I'm looking at the other side of life. And I'm like, I don't want to do this for 20 more years. That's Aquarian energy to say, I need a change. I'm not saying that, you know, go buy a Corvette and get a, you know, leave your family or anything like that, which you can kind of see these people run for the hills. But it's a way for you. That's the Aquarian energy it's saying, I need, I, I yearn for a change. I need it. I need it. To, and I don't know why, right? But I know it feels right. And I know I need to go towards it. Now you add that Saturn element and you put that level of work. Those two actors work together. There's a lot of great things that can happen to that. But I want you to understand what this is giving you. So giving you a level of innovation. It's giving you that Elon Musk type of actor right? Giving you that level of just because you said I can't do it. I don't even have to have the experience, but I, I'm smart enough to kind of figure it out. And I'm willing to go there with you because this needs to be done for the, you know, I like using Tesla. I'm a big fan of Tesla, but he's, he's giving these patents away because he's like, this is not for me to just profit from because I already have money, but it's for a, a, a paradigm shift in regards to the, now you see all these companies, right? If it wasn't for Elon Musk's success, you wouldn't see that new Hummer coming out. You wouldn't see, um, I think it was Volkswagen that's changed the name names to Volkswagen because they're going to change, I think in 2025 to completely EV. It takes that Uranus actor, that Elon Musk, right? I think it's, it's a good concept. But I want you to understand that has changed the game. Because he was, he, was, he was willing to go there. Now, is it easy to step out? No, no. Because you know, people say that has never been done. And that's a, you know, that's a cowardly way to say, I don't know how to do it. Or to say, you know, yes, there's those. And the, the dark side is to just be rebellious to say, we should have, but you don't do any studying towards it. You don't understand the concepts of electricity. You don't do any of the back, the back knowledge gathering behind it. You just want to rebel, right? That will never come to typically won't come to fruition but use that level of understanding these critical concepts right so you know use that saturn uranus to know the rules to break them right know know who's the players to break them knowing the law to not the record <laughs> i know you're like no 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 i don't need to break. i'm just saying that understand that level of concepts understand that higher level of thought because a lot of what we're seeing today is that the sharing of information i I grew up without the internet, right? <laughs> Graduated in 94. And um, this is an insane concept, like Facebook. If you, I have a very good friend of mine that came up with the concept and I, he was in like 91. He was like, there might be online communities of people. I was like, get out of here. Are you out of your mind? That's what sometimes you need to hear when, with somebody because he, he went and he did some brilliant things because he had that level of higher consciousness that he got to. So take that into to, to being. Now we go into Neptune. Now the glyph for Neptune, I like to think of it as Aquaman's trident. Long cycle, 168 years, long cycle ruled by Pisces. Now, this is the water sign. I, I like the 
Pisces is the deepest water sign to me. This represent is a water planet. It's ruled by water. Again, it's talking about the higher level of emotional. It's like the empathic. Now, a lot of people are using the word empath and psychic at the same. There's two different things. But being able to feel the energy in a room with nothing being said, to be able to feel um, the mood shift without a word being sent, said. It's the hidden. It is the underneath. It is the ocean's floor of emotional depth. Sometimes it can lead to escapism. Again, people are using that. Escapism can mean isolation. Escapism can mean drugs. It can mean alcohol. It can mean hiding from the pain or hiding from that emotional trauma that you need. It also can, so again, not to go too dark, right? It can also get that level of spiritual awareness, understanding the energies of other people and understanding and being in tune with your own energy, right? So we went and started this um, talking about the energies of the external energies, but the internal energies. This is going to the fundamental core of things that you might intentionally push into that dark area, into that deep, dark, scary part of the water, the part that you can't see your hand in front of your face. It's that. Sometimes you push things down there because you need to cope on a day-to-day -day basis. That is the Neptunian type of area. That is the core in my belief. And again, the subconscious, it is the belief systems. It's kind of be, you also, it could be victim. You could feel like I'm a victim of things and just going to this level of isolation that is not beneficial because you're kind of escaping versus facing it, right? Now this doesn't mean that you just, but it can also be a higher level of art, of music, of feeling. Like my son has his moon, and Venus, I mean, um, and Neptune conjunct. And it is one of the most beautiful things I've seen. The level of love that this child has given to me is beyond my words. Like, and he can feel things. He, he's super musically inclined. Um, and I recognize it because I, re I read his chart. <laughs> um, but it's something that's hard to put in words. It's, 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 uh, it can be, if you're not recognizing things, it could be that level of fogginess that, it could be that level of muffledness. Like it's like talking like this and you kind of don't figure it out. It's kind of like having, I can hear something, but I really can't hear. But it's also getting in tune with the emotional level. And the that planet is such a, I mean, such a brilliant thing if you are in tune with it. And I think, again, on a macro scale, that's what we're, that's why these are more popular now than ever, right? We have a vehicle that it can't be stifled, right? This, this is teaching people about themselves and understanding the psychology and understanding potentially psychology, psychological gifts, but also psychological pains that remember the anchor that goes to the boat is you can't see where it goes. You think it hits the bottom, but it, you, you've never seen it hit the bottom because you can't go down that deep. When you have a level of, of depth with scuba diving, you have to be careful of even coming back up. You have something called a bend. So you have to know emotionally how to go back up. And when you are empowered by that, it can make you in tune with a lot of great things, which means you can help a lot of people. I have my Neptune on, on my third at my IC for those that know a little bit of astrology. And um, it helped me a lot. I thought it was, I was just like this, adamant daydreamer but no it was a it gives me that level of communication that helps me do this and help me be in tune with this and it's the the level of collective energy within the room the level and also being aware especially water signs of what energy you might not need if you feel everything you got to be careful what you touch right so it's being aware of where this actor is in my chart on my stage understanding what costume it has like this is going to be generational so it's in a sign for you know years decade decade plus so um that's something that a lot of people have it but also what house where on the stage is it hitting me and that's where you can kind of get your emotional depth that's where you can get a lot of um a lot of the shadow work that you need to to get done that's where you can go and it's a beautiful type of energy in regards to 
self-understanding of emotions because we're in, unfortunately, we're coming off of decades, decades and decades of hiding feelings. Example, people not going to the doctor. <laughs> people, don't, they just don't want to have, they won't even know, they don't even want anybody to know that they actually have feelings, right? I, I'm going to stifle my feelings until it becomes unbearable. This is saying like, hey, embrace the energy and the thoughts that you have within yourself to understand that this collective thing is brilliant and there's the level of depth beyond just get over it rub some dirt on it and get get going why are you sad why are you don't be sad be happy well have you gone in that deep water with that person yet do you know what that is do you know what they're trying to hide or what they're trying to work out now i'm not trying to make this dark or anything but what i'm trying to do is give you a level of just that's the work that astrology is that's the work that you work on yourself that's the awareness that you start to realize and it can take day by day. It's not a, you know, it's not binary. It's not an on-off switch. It's about continuous work. But this is where this actor, how they work. And, you know, Aquaman, you know, it was in this lost this law city at the bottom of what Atlantis. It was the, the bottom of the sea, like the deepest, darkest part of the sea was where this was created. I'm using an analogy to say, like, hey, emotionally, that's where these type of emotions are. It's not that that um, moon type of emotion which is the first water sign it's not that pluto which is the undercurrent this is more of the depth i have a tattoo on my arm from it because it's so important for you guys to understand that because uh it's where a lot of people don't go and this is important that you go there so last but not least that we'll talk about is pluto scorpio the dark vader of the zodiac i'm joking very very long <laughs> very very long cycle and what this is, is this is a generational cycle. Again, you see how many years it, it takes, almost 250 years to go around the sun. But it's ruled by Scorpio, and it, it wants to level you up. Let's look, think of the scorpion as the actor. The scorpion has a soft under, undertone, which it protects with its spike and pluto wants you to it some people use it as death not in physical ways but death, death and rebirth is like the phoenix rise from the ashes it is like the person that is growing to the point that the scorpion has to shed its skin it's it, it's actually a painful thing for them to do to shed the skin but they're growing right so they, they go through that process of regenerating because without with holding on to that old skin or holding on to that old thought process or holding on to that old well let's go there that old thought process that was probably ingrained to you by somebody older than you when you were young that during those foundational times of just being purely innocent pluto's gonna say like nah we gotta break the rearview mirror of life we have to move forward it's a level of intensity but that's what you need it's a level of listen, you know, you might have to burn down this house. <laughs> it's not built right. The foundation will be there, but why are we wasting time, right? So it is of endings and beginnings, but in a great way versus a scary way. Even though during the process, it does feel, it is to shed your skin and let it go is sometimes one of the hardest things for people to do. And that's what this Pluto energy is trying to tell you to do. The, the Pluto energy is, is telling you, I want that intensity and that depth, right? I want it in a way that I communicate. I want it in the way, uh, my type of relationship. I want there to feel a bond that is beyond words, right? I want there to be a, a soul connection. I want power, but here's the problem. You know, you go, you want power, but power, do, are you doing that because you felt powerless? Or you, you're doing that because you actually want, because power is intoxicating. You see how many people get into politics that are already rich because power is what they want. Power is a different type of energy. And Pluto can give you that level of where you understand where your power can be, understanding where your potential fears can be, understanding where, where you need to go, where you potentially doubt your power, right? It's, it's, it's saying like, yeah, you got a cape on, dude. Like, go for it. You know, like you have the superpower. Like, I, I think of some of these things as superpowers because when people 
realize the power within themselves, you see a transformation. You're like, wow, who is this person? It's it's like uh, you know Clark Kent and uh, Superman. You know, it's like T'Challa and, and Black uh, Black Panther. It's that level of transformation. You know, it's a, but it it doesn't even with Black Panther when he absorbed that flower, it was painful. It was a painful process that he had to go underneath the soil in a deep way concern that took him into that deep uh, fantasy world, uh, not fantasy world, but you know, that deep thought process that he got in contact with his ancestors to then bring him back above the surface. That's that level of Pluto, right? Like that is a perfect example of what Pluto wants you to do. Remember when he was fighting, and this is an astrological, astrological thing, but also, um, uh, a life lesson, like an astrology lesson. Remember when uh, he was fighting um, uh, the big guy in the beginning, um, Umbaku, there you go. And he was losing and he heard his mother say, show them who you are. That's what Pluto wants to do. And it's saying like, you have this deep within your core. You have this deep within your soul. You need to recognize it. And I'm not intense. I just want to get this done. Right. It's a matter of understanding that level of beginnings and endings. Now, there is a lot of stuff in regards to generational. Like I said, this this if you start looking at the cycles, which I don't have much, but you start to see, you know, mass unrest, you start to see change, you know, macro changes globally, with sometimes with the Pluto cycle, but more in an internal way. It's more about understanding that element within yourself and having the courage to do so, having the courage to dig deep and do the research within yourself and whatever you do, right? It's having that level of intensity. Most of my clients have a lot of Pluto energy in there, a lot of Scorpio Pluto, Pluto energy in there because they want to transform. They were like, go for it, dude. Like they won't give you, I mean, they have the, the most wicked poker face known to man. And I've had literally where I've done readings for people that had a lot of Pluto energy in their chart. And I'm like, I'm going through, I'm doing my thing. And I'm like, I know I'm hitting in there like this. Um, does this make sense? Go on. Okay, I'm going through my tongue, going my things. I, and one of my best friends is actually, and, I, and after I do it, I go through everything. And I'm like, I think I hit everything. And I say to him at the end, how was that? It was a thousand percent accurate, Gordon. That was actually the best thing that I've ever experienced in my life. Thank you so much. I'm like, dude, you couldn't give me anything. But that's that level of I want to, I don't want to give you, I want to see if you can go there with me. And are you going to actually really talk about things that are going to change me, or you're just on the light level? And that's or the surface level. And that's that level of Pluto type of energy. That's what that actor wants. Now, it's not scary. Now, you got to understand if you're in that level of transformation, you got to understand that you don't have to burn down everything. You don't have to start all over everything. You have to tear yourself internally apart regarding doing that, right? You have to be gentle with yourself while you have that energy, right? Or you can put yourself in a, a state that maybe feels a little down, but that's the point of it. Like, it's to take you there. It's you see why it works with Mars, right? It's the force behind the person talking. It's somebody yelling at you and then the person that you're like, oh, he doesn't have to yell <laughs> because he's dead serious, right? That's that level. It's getting past the surface of emotional gesturing and getting down to what, if you want it, go for it. And if you want to go for it, go out on your shield too. Okay, you be tired. That's 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 what that Scorpio energy is like. Oh, you're actually tired. You're exhausted. Good. You really want it. You're scared of failing. Doesn't matter. You went for it. You gave it your all. If you failed, so be it. A lot of us need that energy. A lot of us run from that energy. So I want you to understand what that thought process of energy and how that actor interacts with different zodiac signs. Which you're going to get the magical part of really blending all of these energies together, the zodiacs, the houses, the planets, the aspects, and then understanding on a, Stormy has so much great stuff to talk to you guys about is how to implement the transit. So, so remember the static is your natal chart, but the planets are still moving and how to interact these two energies to be proactive with your life versus reactionary with your life. And you, you, the magic of this, the magic of this awakeness of understanding your own psychology, it's not a matter of 
don't have the inflated ego to be like, who, how can I know more about myself? It's a level of psychology. You'd be so surprised of how external events have hit you, right? So the astrology can be so on point, but if you had a different mother, would your life be different? So it's still that yin and yang, the internal and the external, how that reacted and formed and how that reacts to your actor's unique space. So wanted to go into that and let you know, like first thing to do is get to know your chart, download your chart, download it, right? And put it on a piece of paper. I actually, I like apps. I got a couple apps on my phone, but I actually like to actually look at the chart and circle things and, and, and kind of get more intimate with the chart, but be intimate with your chart. Be intimate with understanding yourself. Where is your moon? Where is your sun? Where is your Uranus? What, you know, understand where these planets are. You'll get used to the glyph, but that's where you start with your planet. Okay. And have fun, right? Don't think you have to know it all today. There'll be things that you, you'll go through and you'll stumble along. And there's concepts that are very esoteric, which is fine, right? That's, what, that's why we're here. It's very different. It's a different way of thinking. But once you see it, you can never unsee it. So have to, and take time with yourself during that process. Um, this concludes um, <laughs> my uh, presentation. And uh, I had so much fun. Again, I really hope that this helps to clarify and give a good foundation of where you wanted to go. I didn't want to just give the cookie cutter thing. I wanted to kind of go into more of a talk with you guys. And Sormi, how's it going? Yeah, looks like we've got, according to the chat, Astro Gold going on during this session. So very okay. big kudos to you. I think we had an amazing time. People are really vibing in. Okay. I mean, it's, it's so I'm just talking to myself for an hour <laughs> and a half. So guys, um, I can't, I don't get any feedback, but again, I just hope that you understand the, uh, passion that I have for this and the passion that Stormy, you know, really has for this subject, which is, it's not, it's, it's beyond money. Again, you wouldn't do this just for the money in regards to spin. It's about saying like, Hey, you're making pe people better. The intent. So this isn't the only tool, right? There's Reiki, there's organized religion, like there's whatever tool you use to, to do it. That's either conservative or seen you know, out there in a good way, like in a Uranus type of way. That's, we, the intent is to make you better and more awareness of yourself. So you can understand your energies and how they, the ebb and flows of them. You're, instead of being reacting to them, you're adjusting yourself before the weather comes. Absolutely. We want to thank you so much. The chat is lit up. I can't wait for you to go back and see how your class went. It is a little bit suspenseful, right? I, <laughs> I'm like, a, 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 uh, yeah, kind of yeah. Own, but it was absolutely <laughs> beautiful. And you guys will make sure that you have all of Gordon's information underneath this video. And remember that you can always check out full recommended reading list at stormygrace.com. There's links beneath this video that you can also not only get over to the recommended reading lists and the syllabus, but also to the previous videos that have gone on so that you can get caught up fully. Now, we are not going to have our next session again until next Monday so that you have time, especially if you're new, to sit down with these planets, grab your chart, start to breathe it in just a little bit. And next week on Monday, Jamie Lee is going to start us off by getting to know these planets one by one by one. So we look forward to seeing you guys there. And if you go to visit Gordon in the meantime, I'm sure that will be absolutely okay uh, as well. So thank you again, Gordon. For thank you. Thank you. Us. Oh, it was a pleasure. I look forward to uh, seeing the other speakers, right? And also uh, whatever you need, let me know. I, I yeah, truly well, enjoy I this. Letting everybody know that you'll be, you'll be back a little bit later um, in the year doing some chart breakdowns, which is pretty yeah, cool. Yeah, absolutely. 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 All right, you guys, we love you a ton and we will see